Okay, so I might just, wait, where's my sheet? Right, so I might just enter a few more bars and you can follow along or you can just skip to the next part of the video. So where am I? So we went to bar eight and again, I have a bunch of half notes. I'm gonna press enter and seven. Uh, and I'm gonna type the notes in C, C. So now I have B natural and B flat, which I guess I could write as C flat, but I'll do B natural. So I press zero. The, here, if we look over here, these three things, these are how we enter our accidentals. I guess you could click them, but it's significantly easier just to hit zero for natural, minus for flat, and plus or equals for um, sharp. There, I saw some complaints that one confusing thing about this panel compared to Sibelius's is that in Sib, you have all the note values written out in that keypad panel, which corresponds exactly to the keypad on your computer. The only problem with that though, is if you're working on a laptop, you don't have a keypad generally. And I, I'm sure there's a, a keypadless, I'm pretty sure there's a keypadless version um, of working in Sib. Uh, here, I, I get it. Yeah, these do not really line up with anything on the keypad. However, these these do, because zero minus and plus are in a line on your on your keyboard. So it's very easy they kind of correspond. Likewise, all of these roughly correspond with all the like schmutz on the right hand side of the keyboard that you don't use. So your brackets, your like here, I'm going to type in bracket, bracket. So that's those two. And those are next to each other on the keyboard. Uh, what else? So this is, what am I typing here? Apostrophe? Is that what you call that? That's that. So that's these three. Now, again, I'm not saying these line up because they don't. Because right next to this is the enter key and that, that won't work for uh what is that? Tenuto. Uh, that's actually up here. So it's not one-to-one, -one, but it is, oopsie daisy. Yeah, and then semicolon is top of it. Uh, but it, you know, more or less lines up. I don't even know how to enter that, actually. Oh, what? Oh, weird. Oh, shift. Oh, cool. Well, I've never used a unstressed, whatever that is, staccato tenuto pipe. Oh, cool. I'm a big dummy. That's actually kind of useful. Because with the key presses, you can just do staccato or tenuto, which makes sense. But in situations where you need to do both, what was it? No. <laughs> what was it? Pipe. Right. Okay. Cool. Okay. Anyway, that was a tangent. Okay. And we're going to get rid of this panel. We're going to click over here. There's a key command for that. Uh, I'm going to carry on writing some stuff. Right. How did I get on that? Oh my God. Sharps and flats. So I hit enter. I hit space because I, I, I have this selected and I hit enter. So that's where the note input starts. If I want to fix it, like I could, I could do a D or something, but we want to see, I'm going to press space and we get another C. Uh, then I'm going to press zero for natural and type B and then B flat, A, D, uh, G. I'm on quarters now, so I press six. I guess you can see that I don't need to announce every single key press. Uh, D, B flat, C, G, I raise it by an octave. This can all be done a little bit faster on a like a music keyboard, but I don't have one at hand. Uh, then I got a bunch of quarter notes, B flat, B natural, C, G, F. Pretty straightforward. Okay, uh, now, leaving note entry behind, I just realized, <laughs> because of my bad penmanship, I actually missed that we have a pickup note or a pickup bar. This can be a headache in almost any music software. Uh, it's pretty darn easy in Dorico, if admittedly counterintuitive, because you don't enter, actually, could you? I don't think you enter it using the bar or bar line panel. You enter it as a time signature. I get that that's confusing. If you think about it though, time signatures do go at the very beginning of a song and they precede the pickup bar generally. So I think there is some logic to that. Let's see, what do we want? I wanna see if I can do this. Insert bar, start of flow. No, this is not how you do it. Okay, cool. So it's gonna be a meter thing. So here's what we do. I, so I selected I selected the time signature and I hit enter, or I could hit shift M for meter, but I'm gonna hit enter because that's generally how you change a selection, right? Enter. So instead of four, four, we're going to do four, four, comma, and then, uh, how does it work? One, I guess, is it one? Yes, okay. Oh no, everything's messed up. Uh, yeah, actually, I wonder, first, first of all, here's the solution. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just select all the notes and then bump them over with the option key or alt. 
and there's our and what is our pickup it's an f quarter note f there so there we are and i'd like to point out that the bar numbering did i didn't need to manually change anything it's automatically kind of recognize that this is bar one and that this is bar zero, which is handy. But I feel like there's another way of doing this. So I wonder, I'm gonna, uh, oh, here, here's an actual legitimate complaint about Dorico. There's no undo history, I don't think, is that true? Yeah, there's no undo history, which is totally legitimately an issue. Uh, okay, but what did I wanna do? Oh, I wonder if I need to be in insert mode, that's weird. I feel like I've done this before without any issue. Or maybe it's because I've added pickups at the outset of the project, but let's see. Insert mode, having this, uh, you have to be aware that you that you have this active because if you're... Basically, if I hit enter and I wanted to change this to a quarter note, I'll, I'll do it this way. If I just want to change this to a quarter note, I add six, press F, and it puts in a quarter note, and then it, it kind of like cuts the duration of the note that was was there and bumps it over. So none of the music has changed, but if I'm in insert mode and I enter a quarter note, everything after this will get bumped over by a quarter note. I'm pretty sure that's how it works. Yeah, this is useful. This is super useful in certain situations, but having insert mode on and then forgetting about it and doing some copying and pasting or like damn near anything will mess up your project. Okay, so so what the reason I'm wondering about insert mode is if I have insert mode on, I go four four comma one. Huh. I guess it's still easier to create a time signature with a pickup, or rather create a pickup bar at the outset of a project. But this is really not so bad. All right, works for me. Okay, let's add this uh, note. Okay, I think that's not as difficult as people make it out to be. Uh, what else could we do? I guess we could do chords. Chords are pretty straightforward. Shift Q, which I know Shift Q for chords might be weird, but in Sibelius, Q is what clef, right? Q for weird. Um, I don't know what these chords are, actually, but let's say hypothetically, since we're in the key, let's say this is, this is, um, E flat, six, what's the six, uh, oh my god, C minor, uh, F minor, A flat, cool, chords are easy, there's really nothing to it. Other note input stuff, oh yeah, just copying and pasting stuff is really easy, or just hitting R. Like if I if this bar was all B flats, I could just press R. Easy peasy. If I wanna, I guess, just point out a couple things that I a hundred percent agree with that Tantacruel video. Um, one thing that's really annoying. Actually, you know what? Let's cut and I'll go to another project. One sec.